Well, hello and welcome to Playing Us Universal, a conversation with myself and Welsh. Today I'll be having a very interesting conversation, a conversation that very few people are willing to talk about or share their deep struggles and deep pain that they go through. After many years of getting married, the struggle of fertility. This is a pain that many couples on a daily basis go through. They struggle with this enormous challenge of having a family of their own. I'm fortunate to have Vivian here with me today. Vivian is an entrepreneur. She's, she's built many business and sold businesses. She's so successful that she's actually inspired so many in what she does, in the way she conducts her business. She's inspired her community as well. Vivian is a hands-on, multidisciplinary entrepreneur with 25 years spanning from the financial service, banking, retail, and health and beauty sector. She's a qualified chatter management accountant and a beauty therapist. In 2004, Vivian launched her own West End hair, West End London-based hair and beauty company, employing over 20 staff. The innovative business, Mother's brand and re revitalized the UK beauty industries through its wide range of quick fix resorts, based services that could be tailored to clients, time and budget. Vivian went on to acquire two additional London-based beauty business, a city-based clinic and an East London-based hair and beauty salon. She sold this business off in after 15 years of opening the West End and salon. Vivian is now focusing on advertising, inspiring, connecting, and promoting other business owners through her newly launched podcast, Shade and Coffee with Vivian, in collaboration with other high profile influencers. I am super excited to talk to her because not only is she going to share this her personal story, she's also going to talk to, her, talk to me about her business story. Meet Vivian. Well, hello guys, and welcome again to Playing This Universal, a conversation with myself and Welsh. I have the amazing Vivian here. Um, as I said in my introduction, she's an entrepreneur. She's so much more. And she's someone I'm really interested to talk to about so many different issues, especially ones that we women go through. Vivian, how are you today? I'm good, thank you very much. Sitting here on a rainy, <laughs> a rainy weekday afternoon and just um, I know it is one of those afternoon and we're enjoying it <laughs> we're, getting, we're getting by it one way or the other um, this conversation you know, is certainly brightening up my afternoon so I'm exactly really exactly and having having to speak to you I think I'm absolutely delighted I'm going to I'm talking to you because I think you inspire so many I read your bio and I read it out before I did the introduction I was really impressed by what I read and I'm like, oh wow, I can't believe I'm going to talk to her to tell her to, for her to enlighten us about a few things we don't know. But before we go into that, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Who is Vivian? Right, well, the first thing I'll say, I'm very happy. I've been very blessed in that I'd sold my businesses. I'm going to talk about them. I had them for 15 years and I sold them. I was just talking to a friend today. I said, you know, it's nearly a year since I sold them. I sold them in November 2019. And it was funny because I was telling her about this interview with you and sort of finding joy through pain. And it was pain that led me to, to, to selling them. And it was pain that's brought me so much joy because about a week or two later, there was some talk of um, the pandemic, you know, in the early stages before people knew kind of what was really going on. And, and if I had to wait another month, I wouldn't have been able to sell um, that business. So because of the, I had some issues about five years before, which we can talk about a, a bit later on, pain related. And so I knew that I had to get out, I had to sell, but anyone that's got a business will know, it takes time to sell a business, you know, a private sale, it took mm. a number of years. And the universe just decided in November, it would release me from that to focus on the issues that, you know, that led to that, the pain. And then uh, just, so many things happened and I realized, wow, I feel like I won the lottery. Yeah. <laughs> I just, you know, 
I feel like I've won the lottery to be free of that and to be able to focus on, you know, sorting out the, the health issues that I had, avoiding what would have been a catastrophe. I, I, where I was mentally and physically, I don't think I'd have been strong enough to see myself through the pandemic with the, you know, with all the issues. Yeah, yeah it was the central, central London businesses. So anyone that's in bricks and mortar will know the rents and the rates are mm. phenomenal. It's a service industry, so the staffing, all of that sort of stuff. I, it's a headache that I just wouldn't have been able to cope with. So I feel really, really, really blessed. <laughs> oh, I really came through. Oh my goodness, that is amazing. He really came through for me. But um, the businesses were in health and beauty. So I had beauty salons, hair salons and beauty clinics um, around central London, Soho, um, Liverpool Street area. I had for 15 years, so I opened in 2005. Um, again, purely accidental. I, I, I was the um, an investor initially because my background before that was finance. So I was an investor initially um, into a concept that then ran into trouble and ran out of money. And then I was asked to invest a bit more and to step in. And then eventually I was left holding the baby and it was totally unexpected. I mean, at that point, as I was probably the furthest you could get in terms of a, your ideal client, in terms of beauty. I was such a tomboy. I didn't do any of those services. You know, it was a real um, baptism of fire. But again, often the universe speaks and you may not hear the first time. You may not understand what has been said, what is happening, the reasons why. But the last 15 years have been the best of my life. I really enjoyed the journey, learning new skills, completely new industry. Prior to that, um, I was in finance. I came to London, I'm not from um, London. I came to London in um, 1997 to start my finance career. So I cut my teeth with a number of banks, um, doing all sorts from project management, change management, analyst, um, chartered management, accountancy. Until then I you know, fell into yeah. the business, which was kind of my, my most recent story it was that. Yeah. Oh, wow. No, Vivian, that is amazing. What, when you said the business, um, you know, the beauty business is very, very vast. I mean, they do, there's a hair salon business, there's a skin therapy business. What specific business did you fall into? Yeah, they, they were different. So it was health and beauty in terms of all the traditional beauty treatments you can think of. So all the typical, whether it's um, facial, skin, so we specialised in skin as well, hair removal with laser, um, and we did some aesthetics, but then I had a clinic that opened up later that focused on aesthetics, because it's quite different, you know, yeah. dealing with needles and things like that, as opposed to the more holistic, relaxing side of things with massages. The hair was experimental. We bought, um, th these businesses were set up from the ground up, like created, but then there was a business that came up for sale and that one was experimental because they already had hair. I don't know anything about hair. And it's, uh, you know, European hair, mixed hair. Well, these businesses were not, you know, like black businesses. Um, it was just, you know, very, very diverse um, client set. And so when I bought that one, the, the idea was that, okay, get rid of the hair. But I always believe, I think when people buy businesses, I think they miss a trick because okay you're excited you've got this new business you've got the concept in your head you're going to you know do the interior design but you're missing a trick if you buy a business that's a going concern and it's already there and running and you see some potential in it mm -hmm. then why don't you just take a deep breath allow it time to keep doing what it's been doing like you don't have to change everything overnight mm -hmm. and then you'll learn something because what i think what a lot of business owners do they go in they change everything yeah. You know, and then they miss out completely on learning what was going right. What, what elements can you keep? What can you learn from? Learning more about the team you just adopted. So I did that with this business and it turned out that the hair was, you know, it was, it was working out and I thought, okay. So that was a learning curve and that's how I got into that. But primarily it was beauty from the aesthetics to the traditional um, beauty side and the beauty retailing basically. When you talk about buying a business, I, I think the first thing that comes to people's mind is fear. They start having this panic attack, stress, because, you know, you're, you, it's like taking something you, you know, you absolutely love. At the same time, you're now responsible for this baby. 
did that give you any sense of fear that you now you're jumping in this or were you just totally excited because this is something that you were, be, were willing to learn with it? In, in everything in life, there's perspective. Like my husband and I joke, he says, I'm very glasses half full. It's same glass for him is like, what happened to half of the wine? It's, it's gone. So what I find when I was buying the business, there was no fear because I'd come from the world of setting up a business from scratch. And if anyone knows what that means, so, so we find with, with the property search took two years just to try and find the ideal location. We found a place um, in the first place that we found was in the West End in Soho near um, Carnaby Street. The rent and the rates were just so high. We had all these tenders for refurbishment. I was like, oh my God, I could buy a house. <laughs> You know, it was ridiculous. And because it was a brand new business, again, we were very, um, I was new to business. So there was, so what I know now, I didn't know then. So you had to build a, each customer one at a time, you know? Do you know what I mean? It was really, really hard going, but we had this belief in our concept and we thought we, we're gonna do this. When we opened, we ran out of money. Remember at that point, I'm still an investor. Yeah. But what you forget is that that premises it, it, it was a different kind of business when we took it on. So there was, there was no footfall, there was no goodwill, you know, there was nobody going there for those types of services anyway. So you have this huge marketing expenditure to try to generate that awareness. And then you're trying to build trust customer by customer. So when it came to buying a business, it was a no brainer. I was like, oh my God, I'm not doing that again. You know, it's like giving birth. I'm, I'm gonna, this business has been going, it's got 10 year history and it's for sale. It has clients, it has staff, it's all kitted out. I can do the refurbishment later, but that's not structural. That's just cosmetic. How much is it? So I, I was actually excited because that was so much easier because of where we'd come from. Yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's, if someone is to go into a buying a business, especially in times like this, right? Mm -hmm. What would be your, you know, your first, your learning process? You know, you've learned that journey. You've done it from, you've, you know, being in, you were an investor and then you became a business owner. If you're to advise someone going into that, saying, this is my thing, I'm, I'm, I'm an investor, I want to buy a business, what would your advice be to them? So in terms of what the person selling the business or somebody wanting to buy a business? The buying the business. To buy, to buy a business. Um, if you have no, you know, if you have no, knowledge, background, any competence in that, then you need to do an honest uh, audit, firstly, of your strengths and weaknesses. Yeah, so think about putting together your ideal team, yeah, like football team, whatever team you want to think of. So when you want to do something, you've got to work out what, you know, what competence, what skills does it take for me to do this thing that I'm wanting to do? Then you do a really honest audit for yourself of whether you have those skills. So what your strengths, what your weaknesses are, because there's no point going to buy, you know, I would never have bought a hair business if I didn't have, at that point, I already had like a decade of beauty and I had some understanding of it. But also the business that I bought, the hair side, came with a manager and people who, I, I didn't have to manage them. I didn't have to have that information. So it's, a, it's unwise to go into an industry or something where you're, you know, you're very exposed and you have no um, knowledge or skill set. So in doing that audit, you make sure you plug those weaknesses. So it might mean you bring in on business partner or you bring in a manager or you rent space and let the people come in and you know, they manage that. Yeah. And then, you know, if you don't want to start from the ground up and you're actually wanting to buy a business, you know, sadly, I say sadly, times like this are a good opportunity to, to acquire uh, businesses on the cheap because there'll be a lot of business owners who want to sell up, you know, it's just, it's, you know, it's more than it's worth or a cash flow is, is an issue because of what's happened with the, with the pandemic. So you can get some good deals. You can go to an agent. There are a number of agencies out there. It's quite a lot more than people realize. Yeah. They say, yeah, think of it like an estate agent. But there are marketplaces, you know, whether it's Amazon, estate agent, wherever, there are always, there's always a marketplace for buyers and sellers of anything, any product, any service. Um, but the businesses are the same. So when I wanted to sell, I went to an agency. It's very discreet because, you know, it takes years. You don't want your staff to know you're selling. You don't want your neighbours to know you're selling. You don't want the market to know you're selling. So similarly, you go to an agency, they'll get you to sign a non-disclosure um, agreement and they'll talk you through the kind of businesses and, um, and your budget and all that sort of stuff. So I would, you know, my advice is say men and women process things differently. I think women, we do things that we feel there has to be some kind of connection from the heart. 
apparently this is a generalization whereas a man will be you know is that going to make me money <laughs> is that is that going to be successful is that that sort of thing so again you know do an audit about what are your goals and objectives and within that you will include things like your work-life balance you know you have to be really realistic you know the kind of support you're going to get from your family so i have a friend who's opened a business recently and it's in childcare. You know and she has a huge team but it's it fits in with her work-life balance because she doesn't have to work too many hours or too many days in the week she's she's almost like a, like a recruitment um consultant company so sort of getting these people in and sending them out you know to yeah. people who, who need those services i have a friend who's gone into manufacturing and created a gadget that's really taken off all the hotels and businesses want them you know and they're working from home quite comfortably because they're producing it abroad and sending it to where it needs to be and i have a friend who's gotten into the restaurant business a bit of headache part you know long hours early morning afternoon late night shift you know turnover of staff so you have to work out you know what is it that you know it's going to have an impact on your life so what are your goals in terms of the kind of business you want is it a lifestyle business what kind of dedication you want to get give to it you know your strengths and weaknesses have been adjusted accordingly so that you're not exposed and then there's some of the other factors like money you know i always find when, when it's your own money on the line i find you work harder and smarter you know i found whenever i've made the mistake of allowing someone to come in and they haven't got money on the line you know talk, talk is cheap with me there are instances in the early days when had it not been my own money on the line and I would have turned around and ran, <laughs> gave the keys back and ran. But I had so much money invested yeah. that I had to just really knuckle down and think, how do, okay, how do we make this work? Okay. So if you want to start a business, these are the considerations. There's a wealth of help, free help. Every year there's a business startup event, big, um, it's an Excel. Banks are all vying for your business. So they'll have information packs, CDs, help with writing business plan. The government love businesses. SMEs, small and medium sized um, enterprises, are the backbone of the UK economy. So the government love businesses. So if you want help, there'll be government agencies that will help you sometimes for free with writing resources, getting apprentices, going on workshops. So I would say to people, you know, just go for it. But it is like childbirth. This is coming from a woman who doesn't have any children. <laughs> but I've heard stories from people such as yourself. It's one of those things probably. It's best not to um, think too much. <laughs> and yes, just kind of get on with it if it's your passion, and you'll you'll come through to the other side. <laughs> if you think too much about it, you may never. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think you're absolutely right, Dave. When you, it's one of these things when you over over process it, it just, you start to get really you know frightened. You think to yourself, "Should I be doing this? Should I be doing this?" But you know, think of the most important thing is to focus on the end goal. What is it? Why did you think about it in the first place? And how do you get yourself? and build small chunks of steps of, of ways that you're going to achieve it because it's never going to be easy. Nothing, um, building anything is never easy. So you just have to work and be patient to see your growth as well. You don't plant a seed and expect the seed to grow overnight. You still have to give it time, nurture it, yeah. and put in some effort. Mm -hmm. But that leads me onto your, um, the pain of why you sold the business. Um, you sold the business, um, luckily you sold it this year, right? I saw it last November. It feels like yesterday because it has just disappeared like this. And so luckily, I can't believe that. It's been one year, I can't believe it. But your pain led you to sell that business. So yeah. I would love you to tell, share, share your story about this pain that led you to share, um, sell your business. Yes, lots of different types of pain. It wasn't just the one, the one pain. Um, early on in the business, I had. Um, I was listening to something that you said earlier, and I was sort of nodding, and uh, not, not today, at a previous um, occasion. I had a business partner pain. That was devastating. That was devastating. I've been very fortunate in that um, the universe has found a, a, a way to forgiveness mm. for, for all of that and for healing. Um, but what happened, I was really, my trust was really rocked, um, you know, by a business partner, my only business partner, um, actually. And that was many years ago and that's how i was left holding the baby basically um and that was really painful and when stuff like that happens i think with any relationship it can get really bitter and i i don't i don't i don't like things to be bitter especially when there was once love 
between two people. And then whatever happens, even if you wake up one morning and you think we are so different and I don't want you in my life, people, they're entitled to think that, you know, that's, that's okay. But there's no need for the negativity, the bitterness, the, the, the fighting, the character assassination, all, all of that on top of you're trying to manage this business and, and, and move forward. So for many years, there, were, there was this sort of bitterness Mm. And I, I come from a family where there's a lot of love and there's a lot of faith in God. Mm. Yeah. And so the thinking was, look, you don't have to, just because you're in pain and you're angry, you're bitter, don't, it's like swallowing poison. Don't, don't spew out poison. Just try to, you know, mm. so that did work for me actually. And it did bring about a pathway to healing where it transpired when I later met up with my business partner, who, by the way, from the beginning we've had the same uh, number of shares so so often you'll have people whispering in your ears things that are I say negative friends mean well they see you're in pain and they're telling you you know do this do that but I'm really happy that my parents are such a strong force in my life because they said don't do any of that just because someone has wronged you you have no right to evaporate their shares they have the share in the business they're no longer there with you but you have to honor this yeah. and I'm really happy they did that because when the business was sold there were tears shared because my business partner couldn't believe that she got her equal share. You know, she couldn't believe. But to me, if you if you live your life and you're thinking about, you know, money and but those things are not important. COVID has taught us that. Yeah. I think you have to. I want to treat other people how I want to be treated. Right. And just because someone hurts me, for me to hurt them, then I hurt myself. Because why? Why would I treat someone in a way that I didn't like when, when I was treated? So that was kind of the background to that. So, so I was alone in this business where I'd never planned to work there full time. I, I'm just an investor. And suddenly this other person who I invested in had disappeared after I'd come in as a, as a, as a, as a white horse or whatever the term is. And then, um, as I said, I have no children. And then, it, you know, my health began to go because when you work in that industry, anyone that knows that industry, it's long hours. We have to be available to you, the consumer, before you start work, during your work day, during your lunch hour, and when you finish work. And because I'm in the West End, you can imagine, I'm not getting home till nighttime. So I had a decade and a half of a really unhealthy, destructive um, lifestyle. I, you know, I can't really eat during the lunch time. It's a busy, very, very busy um, we were. We were very, very successful. And I'm coming home very late at night and crashing out. So my sugar levels were doing all sorts. And I'm just stressed because it's, just, it's a bricks and mortar business, which means unlike being in an office or anything like that, it's constant. Yeah. And with the advent of all this new technology, it was just every time some new technology came out, I thought, oh, another way that customers and people can just, you know, disturb you. It never switched off. So you can imagine I'm getting sort of more and more stressed. In the meantime, I'm with my... He was my fiance at the time, now, now my husband. And we decided we should probably try to have, to have children, but it's not working out at all. So we need to go on IVF. Anyone that's been through IVF will tell you it's that's a big pain. It is its own it, journey, its own pain. It's intense. You know, I'd be walking down the street sometimes, you know, this is in the West End, crying, <laughs> just like a mad woman, you know, <laughs> with the tissue. Strangers would walk by and say, Are you okay? You know. People are very kind, I, I, I must say. People are very kind in general. And I, I always just say, oh, I'm fine. It's just IVF. <laughs> I just, I had no shame. It was just, what is this? That the drugs spin you out, your body and your mind is not your own. But I began to become quite ill. I didn't realize initially that it had anything to do with the, with the drugs. They're, they're quite intense, but also the stress. It's quite, it's quite stressful. And we went through a number of cycles. Uh, we've done about four cycles at, at this point. And because I wasn't able to rest, so I was literally rushing from the hospital, you know, you have to see them sort of every other day back to work. And I just wasn't able to rest my mind, rest my body. And as I said, I had, you know, a decade plus of really unhealthy mm. lifestyle. It began to build up. Yeah. And later on down the line, I began to have what I now know it was diagnosed um, this year as an ice pick headache where I would, it was like someone was stabbing me in my head. I would scream. I could be in the street. I could be on the, on the escalators. I would fall down. I'd been hospitalized. They didn't know what it was. I had to have scans. It, it, it was awful. And it's funny because listening to some of your work, 
We talked about, um, you know, when other people are affected by your pain. And it took my husband, so at the time he was my fiance, we've been married now, we got married in 2016. And it took him, like, it's like holding a mirror up, you know, in front of you. You're, you're seeing your pain through someone else's eyes and, and the impact you're having on them. And I just thought, no, I'm doing this all wrong. What, you know, what is this life about? What am I doing to myself? What am I doing to my, my relationship? And I knew then something had to, to go. So we had a conversation. We had a big family outing, actually. He came, spoke to my mum and my dad and, and my siblings, because they are shareholders as well, my, my family members. And, you know, it's like the light bulb went on. I need to sell this business. It's, it's, it's killing me. It's killing my life. It's mm -hmm. killing my relationship. I mean, your partners can be supported to a certain extent, but when they're not seeing you at all, yeah. and then they see your health deteriorate, and they and they see that you're not doing anything to you know to counterbalance that, it's not. It's a dangerous place to be. It's not a healthy place to be. So that was the moment we decided we, we need to try, you know try and sell this business. And the odd thing is, um, Anne, is that had I not sold when I did. I'd made up my mind, I had the discussion, I'd sent out a warning to the, to the um, shareholders, my, my business partner, that I was gonna hand back the keys. It got that serious, but the universe delivered. Yes. And it got sold. Wow. <laughs> a beautiful story.